Good morning, friends. I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to study in nurse practitioner school. You've already been to school, you've got your bachelor's degree, so you kinda of think you have some pretty good study habits already in place. But what you're gonna find is that your graduate program is gonna prepare you very differently and have a very different set of expectations for you. And if you fall back on those same study habits you had before, you are not gonna make good use of your time. So in this video, I'm gonna break down four tips on how to properly prepare you and make best use of your time. One, we're gonna focus on mastery. Two, we're gonna dive into boards preparation. Three, we're gonna prepare for lecture. And four, we're going to immerse ourselves in clinicals. If we haven't met yet, my name's Bree. I'm a nurse practitioner. I work in an acute care setting and I make content for nurses, NPs, and students. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> So let's get right to it. There is a fundamental difference between your BSN program and your MSN program in the way that they prepare you and what they're preparing you for. In your bachelor's program, the vast majority of you have not already been working in healthcare and have not been a nurse already, the majority of you. So they have a ton of information for, that will cover a ton of different career options for you and they need to get it all a broad overview of it so that you can pass boards and go off into the various fields in which you're gonna practice. So there's a general sweeping overview of all of the information and it doesn't dive quite as deep. It also is heavily focused more on memorization and this is, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but regurgitation of the information you've been given. So for example, if they have you know, 13 different disease processes that you have to learn within a three week time frame, they're probably more likely to ask you questions directly from the material that they've given you to study. Versus in your master's program, the key word there is mastery. The focus is much more on mastery of the material. They know that you've already been to school. You already know how to study. They know that you are probably already working as a nurse and you have a base level understanding of all these disease processes. So there's gonna be much more focus on a deeper understanding of it. And they're not gonna ask you a question from page 17, chapter two on the gallbladder. You know, they want to, they're gonna, when they hand you the syllabus, it's gonna have all of the topics they're gonna to cover. They're gonna expect you to understand the material and they really don't care how you get to that point. They will give you a list of, you know, maybe 10 recommended books that each cost $200, but they're not gonna ask you questions directly from this material. So my first suggestion would be that maybe you don't buy all those books, okay? I know my teachers aren't gonna love me for saying that, but let's be real here. All the teachers care about is that you understand the material. How you get to that understanding doesn't matter to them. So unless you are the kind of person who can speed read or really retains information when you read, those books may not help you as much as you think they are. Now there, there are some, there are caveats, there are some that you will use in your practice later on and that learning it now while you're in school will help you. You have to kind of tease that out, but don't, don't get so overwhelmed when you get that syllabus and there are so many books on there and so many chapters to read every week. I kind of threw that out the window very early on. What I would do is get my syllabus, look at the topics that we were gonna cover and then study them in my own way. You've got to really focus in on your best learning style. For me, I'm very visual, so I watched a lot of videos. I also listened to a lot of podcasts in the car, but anything I could do to immerse myself in the topic that we were gonna cover that day, I found better prepared me for the lecture and better prepared me for the material on the test than reading all of those chapters. All right, it's time to prepare for lecture. I think this is probably one of the most important things you can do in NP school. In my master's program, and probably in yours, it'll be the same, there are a ton of guest lecturers that come in. This is a privilege, y'all. Take advantage of this. These are professionals. These are people who are top-notch in their field, boots on the ground, doing this work every single day. They are guaranteed to know the latest and greatest, the most evidence-based, direct path for treatment of what they're doing. These are the people you wanna learn from, not only for your test, but for your boards and for life and for your career. So really spend some time on this. This is how I got ready for that. So usually the night beforehand, they'll send you the PowerPoint slides, they'll give you the information about who your lecturer is gonna be. I would spend like 
it doesn't have to be long, like maybe three minutes, just cyber stalk this person. Where do they work? What's their practice? <laughs> you know, what is their focus on? So that you kind of have a little bit more of an idea about what they're going to talk about. And you just look more respectful to them when you're asking questions or talking to them after class. You can also kind of maybe finagle your way into some clinicals, you know? So do that. Spend three to five, no more than three to five minutes doing that. It, it will help you. The second thing I do is um, I take the PowerPoint slide, print it off and get it ready because I'm still a note writer, but I write my notes on those um, and have that ready so I kind of know what they're going to talk about. Um, and I do not read the 15 chapters they assign to me on whatever the topic is. Let's say we're talking about, um, let, let's say we're talking about GI cancer of some sort. I will go to the resources that work for me. I spent a ton of time on YouTube. There's a little bit of caveat to that. You know, you've got to be careful who your sources are because anybody <laughs> can go on YouTube and put anything out there. So make sure you're finding a credible source. But then go on there and let them walk you through it. And I would take notes. I would draw a picture of the GI tract and I, then I would color code it. You know, these are the drugs that we use to target this. This is the Firefox. This is the full fury. This is the treatment regimen that they tend to use for this. Just to give myself some sort of familiarity about what they're going to talk about. I've never worked in oncology before in my life. I have no background to draw on, but at least these words don't sound completely foreign to me when we're in lecture tomorrow. And I can refer to that little paper that I made and I can ask relevant questions. And another source I would use were podcasts. I spend a ton of time in the car, so I would listen to podcasts a lot that were targeted to that. The last thing I would recommend you do in preparation or conjunction with your studying for this subject in your lecture is to incorporate your boards prep to this. So for example, I did the Barclay review, I had the audio, I would listen to that hour long CD on the GI when I was going to a GI lecture, just so that I've heard it one more time because you need to hear that information a lot, that material is vast. So, and there, there was a handful of times where I was in a lecture and something that was on the board review was brought up and it just kind of helps it really sink in and make more sense to you so that it's less memorization and more understanding or mastery. So that segues into my next section, which is diving into boards prep. You really, I use that word dive on purpose. You really need to dive into it. I know, I know, I know. You're overwhelmed with the amount of information you have to study for your test. You're overwhelmed with the paper and the group project. You've got clinicals, you're still working, you've got a family. I know you're overwhelmed with that. And the thought of studying for boards while you're in school makes you physically sick to your stomach. Just bear with me. It's really important, y'all, okay? It doesn't, it can be the low hanging fruit but it needs to be incorporated in there. Try and use your passive time. Like I just said, I listened to mine in the car. I had a long commute back and forth to work, back and forth to clinicals, back and forth to class. When I was studying a certain section, cardiology, I would listen to the cardiology CD and, and not heavily focusing on it. Like, wait, he said for this valvular dysfunction, I'm gonna hear this sound. And for this one, I'm gonna hear this sound. I didn't focus that way. I just kind of passively took it in and what it does is at the end of your program, you've heard this material over and over and over again, and it's much, much easier to then master it without the massive amounts of time that you're gonna have to spend to memorize it if you haven't done that all along. Make time for it, y'all. It really, really is important. Piggybacking onto this talk about boards preparation, I need to add in a little bit about how, again, the, the nursing program and the NP programs differ a little bit. In your nursing program, the focus is on nursing, bedside, clinical, whatever it is you're gonna be doing, it's heavily focused on the art of nursing and what you need to pass NCLEX. Nurse practitioner school, <laughs> you're gonna start segueing into the world of medicine. <laughs> they, <laughs> this is a whole different topic I could go into, but for the purposes of studying, you need to be studying medicine. So you have to start thinking like doctors and studying like doctors. So if you're in your pharmacology class and you're studying antibiotics, go to the Infectious Disease Society of America's website, print off their guidelines for all the various infectious diseases, C. diff, CAP treatment, H. CAP treatment, all that stuff. Print it off because that's the material you're gonna use for life 
that's the material they're gonna test you on boards. It's probably gonna be the material they're gonna test you for in your class. So those are helpful resources and things that you definitely should spend time studying. The last thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is probably gonna annoy the heck out of you and you're gonna be like, Brie, I don't have time for that, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna argue why I think it is important and that is an immersion in your clinicals. I know you've got a million assignments you've got to do, you're working, you've got a family, you don't have time to really heavily focus on clinicals, but I think you should. Number one, I'm gonna put a link up here that um, I want you to refer to about why you can turn your clinical into a job if you treat it properly. Um, number two, you're gonna get way more out of it that is directly going to affect your grades and your ability to pass boards and your success as a practitioner than you think you are, if you give it the proper focus. Y'all, I have seen so many students come through that are just literally like robots. They're just automated, trying to just get their hours in, clock it, and be done. I, don't do that. These people are giving you their time, they're giving you their expertise and all their knowledge. Take advantage of that. I promise it will help you. It will help you when it comes time for boards more than you know. So if you're doing a very highly specialized rotation, just use it. You know, I did a rotation in oncology. I had zero background in oncology. I had to study every night before I went in. The good news is I knew what organ system I was gonna be treating each day. And so I would spend time the night before researching it. So when I showed up for clinicals the next day, I looked prepared. I had at least heard some of these words. So I would treat clinicals like a class. I would prepare for it in advance. I would study afterwards. I would listen to podcasts that were directed at that subject. I would watch videos. It really helped me to make sense of the experience that I was getting. Things didn't seem quite as foreign to me. Y'all, I know it seems like a waste of time, but I promise you it's going to reap you so much reward. If you do all of these things, you're going to set yourself up for much more success in your class, in your clinicals, in your boards, and in life. So that's it. It's not that much, right? <laughs> I know, I'm asking a lot, but I want you to have success in your, on your test, in your clinicals, on your boards, and in your career journey. So these are things that I think can help you to focus your time and your energy, and you're gonna do so, so great. I mean, I did, so of course you will. So get out there and study, friends.